understand it. summarizes the Holy Trinity. And non-Catholics find it difficult, especially the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses. But it's in the Bible, very clear in the Bible. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. This word is not to be found in the Bible. But the whole cross, as you will see, all these Bible verses show that there is indeed a triune God. One God, but three persons. So one and one and one are one. Here's a teaching on the Holy Trinity by the Church. First we get our catechism. Paragraph 253. It's 
So a triunity, three oneness of God. Hence the word trinity is actually a conflation of triunity. This is interesting. This word is very interesting. Triunity. The reason being, there are three of them, three persons, but they are so closely united that there's only one God. That's how closely uh, united they are. Jesus says, the Father and I are one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. There's only one God. It's a big heresy to, to say there are three gods. There's only one God. So that's the teaching on the Holy Trinity. Now what analogy is that figure there? You see this area here? This area here. That area there, you see there's, there are three, three circles, but look, there's only one commonality. In, illustra in an illustration form, I think this is the best I can come up with to show, to illustrate the Holy Trinity. There are three of them, but there's only one God. Another way to put this is <clears throat> a, a, a woman can be a mother, a woman can be a daughter, and a woman can be the spouse. Right? Yes? So if a woman is married, then that woman is a spouse. If that woman has children, then that woman is a mother. Now that woman, of course, has her own mother. So she's the daughter. So the daughter, the spouse, and the mother, but there's only one person. There's only one person. Now, <clears throat> this is one thing you need to, I, I, did, I did write it though. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This three persons in one God actually has uh, individual distinct functions, individual distinct roles. Let me put it that way. The Father is the Creator, the Son is the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit is the Animator. Let's put it down. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Creator, Redeemer, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is also called the Paraclete. Jesus. 
Jesus say? That's when he said, only the Father knows when the end of the world is. Only the Father knows when the end of the world is. Why? Because it's God the Father who created everything. If God the Father created everything, that means only he can put a stop to all these creations. In other words, but he's one God. He's also God. That, that, does that mean he, he didn't know? Of course he did. He knew when the end would be. But that's not his role. You follow? That's not his role to play. So he says, only he knows. It's not for Jesus to die bombs. Same thing with the Holy Spirit when he says, I need to go. I need to go so I can remember the ascension. We just, uh, we just celebrated the ascension. And, and of course the Pentecost. The ascension, Jesus had to go back to heaven, ascend back to heaven, in order for the Holy Spirit to descend from heaven to earth. So, so the Holy Spirit, uh, it role, the Holy Spirit's role is an animator, a mover, a consoler. The Holy Spirit has many roles. Consoler.
so no drag, so the sound will not escape. You can never say acoustic. There's no such word. It's always acoustics and use. Please don't say mathematic. <laughs> <laughs> it's always mathematics. Always. And those are just examples in the English language equivalent to Elohim, because Elohim in the Hebrew word is also plural. Now one thing is interesting though. In the Jewish understanding, although they use the word Elohim, they know it's plural, but what they have in mind is singular. singular. So that exhibits three one. It's plural, and yet there's only one God. And then Genesis 18, when Abraham sees three men, Exodus 34. Exodus 34. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Ooh. You see that? Are you with me? Genesis, I, Exodus, I'm sorry, I read this threefold introduction. Genesis, I'm sorry, Genesis 18. I was ahead. Sorry. So Genesis 18, 1 to 5. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mam, uh, Mamre. As he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men stood in front of him. You see that? Three men. Abraham says, when he opened his eyes, in the heat of the sun, in his tent, he saw three men. And yet, if you look at Genesis 18, verse 1, it says, And the Lord appeared to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham, and then Abraham saw three men. Three, one. Three persons, one God. And then this Exodus 34. Okay, verse 5. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. You see that? And proclaim the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, comma, the Lord, comma, a God merciful and gracious, comma, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty visiting the, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. When we, when we pray, remember during consecration on EWT and it's your Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deo Sabao. I don't know if you watch EWT, before the Mass they have that all the time. Take this, all of you, and and eat it, for this is my body, which is given up for you. And then, before that you hear, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Dominus Deus, Sabaho. Three persons, one God. And look here. When, when into, this is an introduction, there's a threefold introduction. The Lord, the Lord, a 
God merciful and gracious. Look at that. And then keeping steadfast love, forgiving. There's three fold introduction in Exodus 34. You can put your Exodus 34, 5 to 6. It's a long verse. And then when it is holy, 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 we sing that in the Mass, right? But why three holies? Because of the Holy Trinity. Now look at Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah 6, 1 to 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face. And with two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. In case you do not, if you see this first time, this is where the, the it's, it's about being coded in the Mass. Holy, holy, the priest says, says that. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. <clears throat> the earth is full of your glory, Osana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Osana in the highest. Then you kneel down. <laughs> Again. John 10, 30. John 10, 30 says, My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. And look at verse 30. I and the Father Matthew 28 is the last chapter. So it's like before Mark. 28, 19. This is about the end of the book of Matthew. Go therefore and make disciples of all, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Specific than Matthew 28, verse 19. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, grammatically, this would be a wrong if there are three gods. Grammatically, in English, it would be wrong. If there are three gods, Matthew would say, in the names of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. In the name. There's only one God. One God, three persons. And then the Trinity experience. 
Let's talk about this later. The Trinity experience. We are distinct individuals, right? We, we are different. People have different likes, different dislikes, right? People have different tastes, different interests, different personalities. And yet, everyone has been created in the image and likeness of God. <laughs> now you can see there how we experience the Trinity. You know how many individuals there are. Everyone is different, and yet everyone has been created in the image and likeness of God. And then we are made for communion. Remember triunity. Trinity is from tri-unity. It's a conflation of tri-unity. So we are made for communion. In other words, you remember in high school they taught us no man is an island? Remember that? No man is an island. Is it? You believe that? I remember during the election, President Obama he had a speech and he was criticized big time for that. What he said was, <clears throat> we are all dependent on each other. That's what he said. We are all dependent on each other. I don't care if you're a self-made millionaire. A self-made millionaire did not, did not actually achieve all those by himself. A host of other people helped him achieve that, right? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, a self-made billionaire. But <coughs> had it not been for those millions of people who bought iPhone, I, iPad, and uh, iMac, and all those, had it not been for those various customers, how in the world could he be a billionaire? That's, that's not possible. So he needed those other people the customers to buy his products. When you own a business, oh, I own this building. Don't you owe to those who build the building? You didn't build the roads. You didn't build the subways. You didn't build the highways. Right? And yet, you're using those roads in order to do your business. That's what he was saying. And so, you know, the critics say, I have my business, I built it. Of course, you built it, but you needed other people. That's why we are made for communion. That's why it's a very wrong thing to say, oh, that's your problem. <laughs> that's your problem. <coughs> you probably heard it said in the, at work. Well, oh, I don't care, that's your problem. Do you, know, do you know that it's, a, it's not in, in agreement with the fact that we have been made for communion? In other words, we should be concerned about each other, 